going. Hump day homers. Always fun. That play is still amazing. Mike, I've gotten such Unbelievable. A, I've gotten such a kick out of watching back the play and viewing the guys on the sidelines that it, it even when I watch the game back on film, just it, it's amazing the reactions and things you see when that play was unfolding from some of the coaches and guys on the sidelines. Well, that contributed to a drop of five spots by the New England Patriots from number 10 down to number 15 in the power rankings. They're on the outside looking in in the playoff chase, and they may not get in at all. We shall see. But, Chris, that top six, we talked about it last week. There are six teams that feel like viable contenders. The Cowboys lost and fell three spots, but they are still in that same top six. That's the line between six and seven between the true contenders and the everyone else. And maybe the Dolphins can invade as a representative of the everyone else. Maybe the Commanders, maybe the Giants, maybe the Lions who are now up to number 11, maybe the Chargers, if they just let Justin Herbert throw the ball around more than they currently do. But it it really is feeling like the champion's going to come from from those top six, maybe those top five. Maybe I'm ready to cross off the Cowboys after seeing – what they've done the past two weeks. You know, they looked so dominant at one point. And now, between almost losing to the Texans and losing to the Jaguars, squandering a 17-point lead, maybe maybe they fall out and it's five teams that legitimately can win it. Well, that's what's frustrating about the Cowboys sometimes. I think they're still a team we've got to keep in that cream of the crop group. I do. Uh, the Texans game, you know, I think we've seen teams kind of fall asleep at the wheel knowing they're playing the Houston Texans. And they made some mistakes where – you know, they, they controlled the game and the physical aspect of it, but you know had some turnovers and things that just, uh, again, it's the NFL. It's professional football where if you give the team too many advantages, you're going to be in a dogfight. Last week, the, the thing with them was, hey, the offense made the mistakes in Dak Prescott against Houston. Well, the offense played great against the Jacksonville Jaguars. I know Dak Prescott threw two interceptions. He was unlucky, just like we just saw right there. That was an appropriate throw to Noah Brown there to get the first down. He can't knock that ball up in the air. He threw it low and safe to protect him so he could catch it, curl up, get the first down, keep the drive going. He put the ball exactly where it was supposed to. His other interception, you know, maybe we can question the play call because they're up by 10 and all that, but they're throwing it. His arm gets hit as he's throwing the football. Ball goes over the receiver's head, interception. They fixed that part, but then it was the defense that let them down last week. So, you know, they are a little bit of a roller coaster. We know that. And that's one of the problems with the Cowboys. It's just it's Dallas. They're the king of Texas, and everybody tells them how awesome they are when they're awesome. But I still I still think they're there, Mike. Who, who okay, out of that top six is your, like, number one team that can upset that, that you look at? I know you mentioned some of them, and I know you're, you didn't maybe mention the Vikings, but who, who's the one that you just – that just screams to you, ooh, they could be a team that messes up this top six. Last week I said the Commanders. I feel differently, obviously, after last week's games. I'm not going to take the bait again with the Vikings that this tremendous win becomes the thrust that pushes them to a Super Bowl win because the last time they had a big win like that, what happened? They lost 40-3 to against the Cowboys. And I think they're going to have a hard time recovering through emotion what happened last Saturday when the Giants come to town because the Giants are still trying to punch their ticket. I think the Chargers currently can do it if they can stay healthy and if they embrace Justin Herbert and let him go out and be who he's capable of being. I think the Lions, if they get in, and I think the Packers, who aren't on the front screen yet, the Packers, if they get in, are going to be a handful for the reason we've already discussed. They've figured out what they need to do, and they're doing it. The question is, can they win enough games to get to the postseason in order to do it there? And if the Vikings are the two seed and the Packers or the Lions are the seven seed, upset alert in the wild card round, Chris. Yeah, I I, I, I hear you there. I do. Uh, may not even be an upset. May not Charger or the Packers may be favored. If they're playing the Vikings in Minnesota by well, the time we get to that point. Yeah, we'll see. We're going to see the – I, I got to see a little more of the Packers before I can buy on buy onto that storyline first. And I, I, I do. I mean, I know it was it, it, a step in the right direction, but I, I'm not ready to, like, ooh, crown them as back yet. Uh, and I hear your points. I mean, if, if they got in, I, I get it. 
They got some weapons, and Roger still his arm is still live, and he's not going to be intimidated to where they'd be scary. I just it's it's the whole team and everything about it. I, I got to see a little bit more. I do, but I, I'm with you with your Chargers thought. I do think they're a team to watch out for. Uh, I don't think we've given them enough credit for the fact of they've been a very beat up football team, and you know again we, that for those reasons, hey, I, I don't know who to blame. I understand that's a, a reoccurring issue there out there in Los Angeles, but at the same time, it is a reality. And man, if Bosa gets back, and you know, there's a chance that Rashawn Slater, their awesome left tackle, could be back. The receivers are back. Uh, that that could be that could be a team. Yeah, you don't want to see them. Another team I'll throw in there. I'm gonna the Dolphins in that are in that 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 category for me too, Mike. I know they lost three in a row, but there's like. Some parts of me that feel better about them in a lot of ways. They answered some questions for me last week. They did. I mean, going up in the cold, playing in those elements, they didn't melt under those conditions or freeze, I should say, maybe more appropriately. Tua wasn't like yes. totally outmatched or bad that way. So th those are two that jump out to me. And the Ravens, if Lamar Jackson gets back and the O-line stays healthy, those are three teams in, in my little list that I could see maybe upset in that, that top six, Mike. Mike. Surprised you didn't mention the Jaguars. Yeah, I know. I'm not ready to say they can upset that. You know, They might jump into the party and get in the playoffs and be a little scary, but I'm not ready to say they'll upset the uh, top six quite yet. The Dolphins went up a spot even though they lost, so I agree with your assessment that in defeat, they nevertheless impressed. And that Packers-Dolphins game, Ooh. On Christmas Day. Yeah. I mean, we went from early in the season, okay, yeah, well, it's football, it's Christmas, it's yeah, and then it's like, oh, man, all these games are going to be bad. All of them are going to be bad. And now one of them is emerging, and that's why I said yesterday they should be able to slide them around on Christmas Day and move that 1 o'clock game to a better spot because that's the best game of the day by far. And and I'm I'm – I'm sorry if that offends the sensibilities of anyone at 345 Park Avenue, but it's true. And they need to account maybe some flexibility into that. If they want to take over Christmas and they want to be a viable alternative to the NBA, they better make sure they deliver good games that day like they did this past Saturday when they can engineer it to pick the games that they put on that Saturday, Showdown Saturday, whatever they called it. And they got two out of three great games, and the third one was still pretty good. It just yeah. paled in comparison right. to the first one and the third one. They need that flexibility. But Packers-Dolphins, great, great game coming up to start the slate on Christmas Day because both teams need it, and we'll find out a lot about these teams. We'll find out a lot about the Green Bay Packers. Has it, you know, because who have they really beaten? In fairness, yeah, who have they really beaten since they've turned this corner? That's right. The that's Bears what I mean. Right. And the Rams. That's right. BFD. Exactly. You beat two and on and company, then you're impressing. Some that, people. That, that's what I'm saying. I need to see a little bit more there, right? You know, I, I I hear what you're saying. I see the potential in a little bit, and you know, maybe they can do something. But this this is this is a different animal than the last two teams they've played. I mean, one team is just playing for culture and toughness with the bears the rams are a total disaster now they're playing a team that's you know played some tough games it's crucial it's on their field and they're explosive and as talented as any team in football and they're certainly more explosive and talented than the green bay packers so uh, this will be a, a big test to know if green bay is for real and can make a for real push here at the end of the season couple of questions real quick. Ramos Mark, explanation for the Bengals being ranked lower than the Chiefs. Well, the Chiefs are a better team and they have a better record. I know the Bengals beat them in Cincinnati, but the Chiefs are still the better team. And I feel better about the Chiefs potentially winning the Super Bowl than the Bengals especially if the Chiefs can avoid playing the Bengals in the postseason. Well, it, 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 listen, I think this is a good conversation. I, I do. I, I understand what, what, our, what our man at Ramos Mark is saying here a little. I, I think you, like, you know, and again, I'm not saying I would do this, but I do think you can make the argument that the, the Bengals are the best, team, the best team in the AFC, maybe, from top to bottom. I worry about the Chiefs' defense a little bit. I can't lie. I know they got Magic Man at quarterback. You know, I worry about the Bills and that, you know, the defense is, is good. It's not great. And then it's just, it's the Josh Allen show. I mean, how can you, I mean, the things he did the other night. I mean, come on. There's not a lot of people open. There's not a lot of anything. It's just him throwing lasers and making unreal plays. To where the Bengals, the defense is legit. 
they can they can stop the run, they can cover people. You know, they can do all that. The O line, since it's been fixed here, they can run the ball a little bit and we know they can throw and so they can play a little bit of every game. I guess that's my thing here. I don't know if there's a team that really the Bengals will play that really pose any ooh, whoa, that's a tough matchup for them. That's 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 all my food for thought is. I don't you know, that's where they're good. They match up about with any style of play, and that's where they're maybe a little different than the the Bills and the Chiefs. Another question, Dan and his base. If Purdy has the hot hand and Jimmy G is healthy again, who gets the start? Is this another Alex Smith, Colin Kaepernick situation? I absolutely. That it's a no brainer. No, Purdy stays. Right. Purdy plays until Purdy's injured. If that happens. <laughs> Jimmy G is not getting back on the field because they finally found a way to break the spell permanently with Jimmy G. <laughs> right. You don't put him back out there. Then you got to figure out what you're going to do with him in 2023. You got to pay him. You got to do something. It's over with Jimmy G. It's Purdy and it's Trey Lance for 2023 and beyond. I think that's a no brainer. Purdy is the guy. He's looked better than Jimmy G has all year long in the three games that we've seen Purdy. Yeah. I, I mean, no, I, I, it's, it's not a crazy statement. You're right. I mean, he brings some element to their team that, that Jimmy G did not bring. And and the way he's throwing the ball in the drop back pass game, and I think the way the team's just playing overall, yeah, there's just no doubt. I mean, again, if Jimmy G were to be back, we're talking about maybe for the NFC Championship game or the Super Bowl. What? No, there's no way. Unless you unless you got to the Super Bowl and Brock Purdy threw three or four interceptions in every playoff game and somehow you still won the game, okay, then maybe. All right, yeah, Brock Purdy's thrown ten interceptions in the playoffs. We're going to start Jimmy Garoppolo in the Super Bowl. Okay, I understand that. Other than that, I mean, uh, just an absolute disaster, yes, you ride Brock Purdy, and he's given that team energy, and they're they're rolling right now. He would have to do what Jimmy Garoppolo did three years ago be so bad throwing the ball that it freaks out Kyle Shanahan and turns the quarterback into Bob Greasy and basically says, you're not passing the ball. And then Jimmy G comes back and say, please come help us. Because yeah, if he's not ready until the NFC championship game of the Super Bowl, they will have gotten that far with Brock Purdy. Why would you disrupt it right. then right. with a guy who's just coming back, who hasn't played and they've all taken to Brock Purdy. They can't put his, jerseys on the shelves out there they can't keep him in stock he's quickly becoming a very popular figure I have a feeling he's gonna be the week one starter next year and I don't know whether they keep Trey Lance or not but I the way it's going so far it's the Brock Purdy show in San Francisco all right let's take a break when we return it's after further review time for week 15 we'll do that when this Wednesday edition of PFT live continues right after this Hi, it's Mike Florio. Thanks for watching PFT on YouTube. Hit subscribe for the latest news and analysis from Pro Football Talk.